Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this week. We are talking about, as he hinted at, home buying homework, which we will get into what that means. Chris, before I start rolling, I just want to take a minute to say that we are, of course, thinking and praying for all of our friends a little further north um, there in the bend and the panhandle uh, of Florida who got hit pretty hard by this last hurricane. We're fairly lucky down here. Um, uh, most of our area was unscathed, but we know that if we skirted by, that means someone else got hit. So our thoughts and prayers are with them. And of course, with your son and all the students on the Tallahassee yeah. as well. Yes. Thank you very much. Fortunately, um, he was unscathed. We messaged him and messaged him and he said, I slept through it. So <laughs> that's what so, we can all hope for, right? <laughs> that's a good thing. I'm not sure if there was a hurricane party. I don't know. I don't care if he's safe. So I'll take it. Huh. All right. Well, Chris, thanks for joining us today. You've got many, many years in the industry. You've got 26 years yourself and your wife has almost uh, just about as many years. So today we're going to be digging into what to do before you put in the offer. And we're going to add in a few things on what to do before you close as well. So yeah. you get asked this all the time. I mean, you help a lot of families, especially that are first time home buyers. And this isn't exclusive to first time home buyers because even if we've bought houses before, like we forget these things. So I just think this is a great thing to review as we're heading into the fall. Um, and people, now that people are settled in with school, they're going to get ready to start thinking about moving again. So, um, or moving for the first time. So Chris, I know you've got some great tips to share with us. Um, very important things that can save huge, huge headaches down the road and during during the process. So thank you for being here with us yes. today. Well, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I, I love doing this. I think more than writing the loans, I love the education piece. You know, most of my career, I spent a lot of time even around the country educating realtors, educating, you know, potential home buyers, investors. And that was probably, uh, it's probably my favorite part of the job. So doing this is ex just as exciting as when a closing happens. So hopefully, those of you, if you're my referral partners, you're just a, a, a realtor that's picking up information, that's great too. Any of our potential clients out there, just investors, people watching, I think that um, you'll pick up a few good nuggets. Some of them you may already have heard of or know, uh, but again, it's a great um, memory jogger for you uh, if you're taking notes to write down a few of these things um, and understanding what you should do to be prepared for before you start going out and you uh on your journey of home buying so we'll get started right away so i mean yeah um when i say do your homework guys i think it's important that you know you you start by doing a little bit of research on where you want to go i think it's important that um you want to figure out where you're going and we've already talked about this in in um other calls like if you have kids you're you're probably looking at the schools uh, if you're moving to a whole new area because it's a work related issue, you want to kind of see what the traffic flow is. You want to understand what your drive time is going to look like. You could be on the wrong side of town and add an extra 30 minutes to your drive. So there's, there's all this different things that you want to, uh, factors that you want to look into. Um, and then on top of that, you also have property values. You want to look at that. You want to look at where, you know, are these houses appreciating the same as some of these other areas? Uh, what are the inventory levels in the area that you're looking at? As a lot in a, in a low inventory market, is everyone selling their house there? I would, that would put some red flags up for me and be like, why is people moving out of here? Especially in a, in a market where there's not a lot of inventory. Um, what are the average days that that property has been sitting on the market? Um, things aren't sitting as long as they were on the market. So if you see something that's been on the market for 90 days and continuously price drops, that would, that would create some red flags. And doing that research, I think one thing I want to add to that is, you know, if you see that they did a lot of home improvements, um, one of the things you might want to look at is the town hall real quick to see if they pulled permits. Wow. Uh, you know, cause you don't want to get stuck with something that someone did themselves one, because it could be a, not that good of a job, right? Or two, it could come back to bite you because you go to do something else and there was never a permit pulled on some of the existing work that you did and someone uncovers it. So you 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 walk into some of these older homes that did some extensive remodeling and whatnot, 
it, it, it would be worth your time if you're going to make a 500 or 300, 400, 700, whatever it is, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars investment um, might make some sense to take a 30 minute drive to the town hall and pull some records on a property just to see what was pulled. Um, so That's I a think- great tip because, yeah. well, first off, most people don't even know that you have to have permits pulled for things. And especially, uh, we don't know, a lot of people don't know how to do that. So you're absolutely right on that. Something no one would ever think about. We just assume that people do things properly. Um, and we know that's not always the case. We know that there's a lot of right. duct tape, <laughs> duct tape yeah. jobs that are done. So think of the headache that that tip alone could save someone down the line. Save you down the road. I mean, you would have to undo a lot of work and pay for someone else to come and do it all over again. It's crazy. I, I've seen it happen. So it's definitely something. So I'm going to knock out 10 things in bite sizes for you guys. Um, so you can take this and write some notes down. So number one is definitely research the market that you're looking in. Do some homework on that. Number two is assess your finances, right? So I want you to evaluate your financial situations. You want to determine how much it is that you're going to want to spend on a home. Uh, you want to want to make sure that you know, you start thinking about calling a, you know, a, a real good mortgage banker. I, I, I'd like to say us, but I don't do this to promote myself. You may have somebody really good that you've worked with in the past, but these are all people that can help you on considering the factors like the income, your savings, your credit score. So you might want to start tweaking your credit score um, part of this process. If you know that you're a little extended on some of your credit cards, maybe drop them down to a 30% utilization to maximize your score. That would be something really good to do. Um, you know, knock down some existing debts that will help you, you know, create and set up a realistic budget. Uh, the third thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get pre-approved for a mortgage. So pre-approval, you know, there's two types of pre-approvals you can get in this market where there's a shortage of properties and, you know, there's a lot of cash buyers, especially if you're buying down here in Florida where we are, uh, you're competing with a lot of cash buyers. So you might want to get a credit, a certified credit approval or a CCA. Other banks might call it something different, but the reality of what that is, it's literally a, a conditional commitment letter pretty much. And it's saying that the borrower has been pre-approved. The borrower is good to go and approved. It's just subject to a clean appraisal and a clean title. Which now really going, is the co closest you can get to cash while you're financing. The, the closest you can get to cash. So get pre-approved for a mortgage, you know, before you make an offer. And I would, I always recommend this to um, all my clients. Go to your mortgage first. Do not go to your real estate agents first because your mortgage banker if you're going to someone that's been in the business for a long time, has proven, you know, I know we're in the number one percent of all mortgage bankers in the country year after year after year in my whole career. And there's a lot of us out there and they know who the, the preferred real estate agents are. We have the data on how many buyers they work with. Um, there are some people that have some good marketing you know, you look on Facebook and they look like they're on top of the world selling a ton of properties, but the reality is they don't do a lot. And in this market, it's really important for you to use somebody that has a good network with other realtors out there, because sometimes that's what wins you the deal. If you're working with a full-time realtor and the other listing agent is like, oh, I know Susan, I know Joey, they're, they bring in a buyer. I know it's a solid buyer. That goes a far and long way here in this business. So what you want to do is when you're going through that pre-approval process on what you can do financially is you want to start asking who, if you don't already have somebody you have to use, um, start asking who those real estate agents are in that market that you're looking for that you can get connected with. Cause I think that's going to be very important for you. Um, what that mortgage banker is going to do, broker, lender, uh, they're going to review all your financial documentation. They're going to review your credit uh, bureau, go over things. If you have to tweak some things, uh, fix a few things, making sure that you're going to be able to demonstrate that you're serious to the sellers when you provide them with that, that conditional or that credit certified credit approval. Um, the fourth thing that I think is really important and not enough people really, um, it kind of goes back to number one. 
but defining your needs and wants okay. as the property, because you're never going to, unless you're building a custom home to you to have exactly what you want, you're going to have to sacrifice some things that you really want, but you're going to have some things that you need. So make a list of priorities for the home. This is going to help your buyer's agent out a lot too, right? Because you can go to them. Here's my list of priorities. I got to identify essential features, right? I need X amount of bedrooms. This is the location I want. I need to be this close to school or this close to my job, as well as some of the desirable features that you might want. What are those desirable features? Well, backyard. I want a yard for my kids to play in. Uh, I, maybe I want an amenity center. Maybe I don't want an HOA. Um, I need a three-car garage because I got a golf cart. Um, I need. I want an updated kitchen. I love to entertain people. I want a nice kitchen. Like These are things that you want to prioritize on this list. This will help you narrow down your search when you're making these informed decisions down the road. So I think it's really would be very helpful for you to make that list up, your defines of your needs and wants, so you can bring that to your buyer's agent and say, here's my non-negotiables when you're looking. That way, you're not spending days looking at houses that just don't make sense. And your your preferred agent will be able to say, nope, I have already know that house wouldn't be for what you want based on what you're looking for. And it may always be worth starting in that area one morning during rush hour traffic and seeing if you can live with that. Um, Correct. Chris, I, I remember hearing you talk with a client before who um, bought in a new area and one month in they were like, I hate I crossing this bridge. Like, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I remember you were able to help them with that. Uh, right. But a simple, just get up a little extra early one morning, start there and see what your commute is. That could save you a headache or a lot of regret. Exactly. And it, it, it makes a lot of sense to just do that. It doesn't take long to do that research and it will save you, <laughs> could save you years of pain, <laughs> literally, yeah. if you're stuck in the house for years. Every morning, um, Monday to Friday. Yeah. <laughs> every day, you're like, what did I do? So five, would, five is hire a real estate agent. Don't try doing it yourself. I would hire a buyer's agent. I would not go to the listing agent. A listing agent in most cases, a professional listing agent really doesn't want to be on the buy side of the deal. Anyways, you're not going to get a better deal. A listing agent has a fiduciary responsibility to the seller every time. So they're not going to give you a better deal because they're getting both sides. So find yourself a good real estate agent. Um, consider someone that specializes in the area you're looking for. You don't want to use somebody that's two towns over. Um, you want someone that's kind of integrated in the area that you're looking for because they have relationships with probably the listing agents and the other agents in the area. And maybe they can even find you something that's off market and get yourself a really good deal. So find someone that can guide you through that process, provide you valuable insights and negotiate on your behalf, unlike what a listing agent would do. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So six would be conduct property inspections. We're going to want to, um, once you go into that process, you're going to want to do a, um, I'm going to blank here, a home inspection. Home inspection. Know, blue home inspection. You're going to definitely want, everyone always asks me, the house looks great. Should I get a home inspection? I will never tell someone not to get a home inspection because I don't care what that house is. People know where to put the rugs. People know where to put the pictures. People know where to put things. They know every little nook and cranny of their house. Move that and couch they, over a couple inches to hide that hole. That they're, not being, they're not being honest or anything, but you want someone to go through that house that that's their job is to find any potential issues with the property. That way you can make an informed decision and then you can negotiate the repairs and any price adjustments that are needed if you do that. So I think it's really important for you to be able to go out there and get that information because you might be able to negotiate getting some of those things fixed prior to your close. And um, home, home buyers can find big and small things through that inspection. I mean, it could be everything from there's a stain on the carpet that they covered with a rug to, mm. hey, the fridge is kicking in on and off. The fridge isn't working. I mean, a huge expense that just the uh, nominal fee of a home inspection saved you from. Correct. Exactly. So seven would be go over with your buyer's agent, review comparable sales in that market. And I'm going to, you're going to understand why I'm saying this now, 
for my next one, but you want to you want to do some research on those recent sales because you want to determine a fair market value of the house because you're going to have to formulate a good offer, right? And you want it to align with the the current market conditions. You don't want to just be the guy that offers some low ball. You'll be out there shopping forever if you think you're going to just keep on offering low ball offers. Just offer them, say the house is 500, just offer them 480. I'm saying 480. You're going to do that for months and months and months, and you're going to get nowhere. And you're going to end up, if you're renting, you're going to be throwing away 2,500, 2,500, 2,500. Before you know it, that 20,000 you thought you were going to save, you already spent it anyways. And you're frustrated and you're aggravated. So do some research, get some reviews, some comparable sales in the market. So you know, when you put present that offer, it's going to be good. So that moves us to number eight, which will kind of piggyback on that review and comparable sales. You want to craft yourself a strong offer. Mindy, these people want to go, you want to go out there and prepare yourself an offer to win, right? A compelling offer where you're not offering too high and you're not offering too low, right? You want to consider the factors when you're offering the price, any contingencies, proposed timelines, you might have a house that you have to sell. Um, so make, you want to make this offer as attractive as uh, possible with, without, and also protecting your interests at the same time. But the seller is going to go with the most attractive offer. So do your homework, do some homework on, I'm not saying go, don't ask for a deal, but don't ask for something that's just not reasonable compared to that market. Cause you're not going to win anyway. So it doesn't really matter. You're not going to get lucky, not in this market, but it's going to be tough. I should say you're not going to, but if I was betting on you or anybody going to throw a low ball offer in, I wouldn't be putting my money on that bet. Yeah. And neither should you because it's your money at the end of the day. You really, it's costing you money the longer you wait if you need to make the move. Realistic expectations save a lot of heartache. Correct. And then you just give up anyways and then you come back and then, you know, house is appreciated and it's even, could be even worse. So yeah. nine is you want to consider negotiations, right? Be prepared uh, for potential negotiations. This could involve any counter offers. So you might put an offer in, you know, you got to think about this in your homework. Think about what your counter offer, think about their counter offer, what you're going to be, repairs, adjustments. Um, there may be some changes to the terms of the agreement. Maybe they want to close in 30 days and you need 45 days, right? Um, and you want to always make sure you're maintaining a clear communication with the agent. So they're making a clear communication and your banker, um, but make sure that you have a clear communication with your, your agent. Um, that way it's uh, mutually beneficial for everybody involved. So consider the negotiations, consider the end game when you're putting in, in those offers, consider it when you're looking at that home inspection when it comes back. And the last thing I want to just say is finalize your due diligence, right? Once the offer is accepted, complete all your remaining diligent tasks that you have, um, finalize your mortgage application, make sure you get everything in, right? So your mortgage banker at pre-approval, if you got a credit, a certified credit approval, you already did that. But if you're just getting a regular pre-approval, you might have just submitted two years of your income statements and maybe some pay stubs, but there's going to be bank statements that might need to still come in. You still might need to show some retirement accounts, like full all the pages of them. Work fast because 30 days goes by like that. A 30-day close is really a 20-day business day close. But what happened? Because most places are closed. I mean, I'm, not, I'm working through the weekend, but my internal people, my underwriters and stuff typically aren't working on Saturday and Sunday. Title so companies, have, everything like that, right. the insurance, yeah. So we got 20 days, you know, 20 days on a 30 day close to make it make it work. So um, that, that's 10 good tips, guys, for you guys to go into it. So before you're diving into your home buying journey, you know, equip yourself with the knowledge that you need, research the market, assess your finances, get pre-approved, uh, it's really about setting you up for solid foundation of success for on your buying your home at the end of the day. And um, remember that we are still in a seller's market. I mean, the, the right. inventory is still much lower than, uh, or yeah, the inventory is still much lower um, uh, than it has been previously. So uh, right. setting up those expectations and setting up yourself for success with these 10 tips um, is going to be just so helpful. And then I'll just do some quick reminders to find your dream home with intention, make your list, your must haves, your nice to haves, your must haves and your nice to haves, right? Cause it's going to, you're not going to get everything can't be must haves. Yes. Clarity leads to confident decisions. I'm, 
promise you, you will thank me later. Uh, don't navigate the home buying process alone. Partner with a great banker, a skilled real estate agent. You know, have them as your advocate, your guide, and your, they're your secret weapon at the end of the day. These people are your secret weapon. They know the people that you need to be with. Make sure you're partnering with the right people. I know your cousin might have just started doing this. It might be a hard conversation, but at the end of the day, this is a $500,000 investment. So think about those things or make sure that you have that person talk to, at least have one of one person on your team that's a rock star, right? And maybe that person can help that other person out, but really don't do it alone. Partner with skilled people. And then when you're making that last offer, guys, be strategic, be strategic, be competitive, craft an offer that stands out, back it with your research. Don't be lazy on this, guys. Back it with research and a fair market value analysis. And I'll tell you, the confidence at the end will shine through. You guys will win the bid. You're going to win the deal. And you did your homework and everybody's going to celebrate at that time. Awesome. Well, Chris, thank you so much for these tips and these insights. Uh, if anyone has any questions on these or they're thinking about stepping in, um, Chris, they can reach out to you. Um, they can check out our website, mortgagedreams.com. They can check you out on YouTube and uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, and then for this video, because there's a lot of information here, if you'd like to review it and listen again later, you can find that on your favorite podcast platform or again up on YouTube um, or on the blog on mortgagestreams.com. So lots of ways to get in contact with you, lots of ways to see this information um, and uh, uh, to, to have it at, in their hands. Yeah, they so, can follow me on Facebook too, because I stream it every week. Right now it's live, but that will be on there forever so you can go on my facebook page i love to love to be your friend they can see that and all your boating trips and everything so oh uh, yeah they can see stuff my, there. Personal, <laughs> my personal crazy life as awesome. well awesome well great. chris thank you so much we'll be back thank here you. next week i hope everyone has a great labor day weekend and for all of those who have monday off get some good time relaxing um and yeah we'll be back here next week perfect we'll see you guys thank you bye-bye bye now